Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Sean Cottrell, who asked me to review the movie Rodan. Hey, I finally get to feature a legendary Japanese monster on this show that isn't Godzilla. Or Gamera. <laughs> Rodan is a 1956 Japanese monster movie and was not only one of Toho's first kaiju films following the success of Godzilla, but also the first to be filmed in color, finally allowing people all over the world to still somehow get that wrong on posters. Now the Japanese name of the monster more accurately translates to Radon, but because American distributors didn't want people to think the movie was about a basement gas leak, they changed it. And also gave it an X rating? Um... Okay, can't say I've ever seen that cut of the movie. Thank God. You can really tell this was Toho's first monster movie in color since they had the opening simulate an acid trip. Screw the credits, I feel like Jefferson Airplane should be performing in front of this. Anyway, it wouldn't be a 50s monster movie without some good old opening narration. Inside an unimposing looking shelter such as this is housed the mightiest weapon of destruction known to man. Military stock footage. Okay, actually they're talking about atomic bombs. Buildings disintegrate. Concrete is reduced to powder. Steel vaporizes. Destruction is total and complete. But remember kids, you can survive as long as you duck and cover. This was back when all monster movies had to open with an educational short. And I'm not sure about this guy's narration. But what have these tests done to Mother Earth? Can the human race continue to deliver these staggering blows without arousing somewhere in the depths of Earth a reaction. He seems really concerned with arousing Mother Earth. The narrator explains that nuclear weapons are to blame for everything, because come on, it's the 50s. What did you think was going to be responsible for the monster, genetic engineering? Okay, the exposition's out of the way and we're on to our main story, which means no more narrator. My name is Shigeru, and this is the village of Kitamatsu, where I was born. What? Did this movie just swap narrators on us? Why the hell didn't they just have this guy talk about arousing Mother Earth? So the movie begins in a small mining town where something doesn't seem quite right. On a day that started much like any other day, yet somehow you knew it wasn't normal. There was a feeling of uneasiness in the air. Well, you are in a mine. It's probably that radon I was talking about earlier. A fight breaks out between two miners named Yoshi and Goro, so feel free to insert your own video game reference here. Personally, I'm more concerned that this place apparently condones blackface. Oh, and our main character is named Shigeru, which I guess explains Yoshi. The workers are uneasy about going in a mine shaft that's gotten so deep it's becoming unsafe, so get your asses back to work, fellas. After all, a little water never hurt anybody. Ah. Eh, I'm sure he's fine. Yoshi, he's almost hacked to pieces. Are you sure? Because he looks pretty intact to me. Boy, I wonder how Yoshi's death will affect morale. Goro did it. Till it is proved, you'll say no more about it. It's easy enough to understand you, Shigeru. You're in love with his sister, Kyo. You'll both say no more about it. Yeah, my narration's supposed to provide all the exposition. And besides, you don't need to say these two are in love. You can feel the electricity on screen. Whatever anyone else may say, I know Goro is no killer. Uh, yeah? Well, according to the video games, he is. I'll walk as far as the mine with you, Kyo-chan. I'm not walking you all the way home, though. I don't care about you that much. They send some people to look for Goro, who's still missing in the mine, but something quickly goes wrong. Ah! Ah! Oh, damn it, what did I tell you about eating less than 20 minutes before going in the water? Seriously though, what the hell is killing all these people? It sounds like he's being chased by giant mice, which actually wouldn't be that unusual for a Japanese monster movie. Alright, you want to know what's really killing all the miners? <laughs> That's right, the Orkin Man's worst nightmare. Boy, Rodan looks a lot different on the poster than he does in the movie. I guess that's better than this Polish poster, which seems to think he's a T-Rex for some reason. Guards! Help! There's a monster here! Now that may seem unusual, but guards in Japan actually hear that quite a bit. You know I always wondered what King Kong's head lice would look like? Let's hope the guards can take care of him. <laughs> Nope. As I thought, good work. 
All the killings have been done by that monster. You think? After getting some bigger guns, they go into the mine to take care of the bug monsters, and continuing with the video game references, mine levels are just the worst, aren't they? The machine guns don't have any effect, so Shigeru decides to try a different approach. Well, now I know what Temple of Doom would have been like if Short Round was an adult, but somehow still a minor. Hmm, <laughs> minecarts. The monster's one weakness. Unfortunately, Shigeru ends up getting trapped by a cave-in, but at least he managed to save everybody from the monsters. The end, huh? Oh, right, the movie's called Rodan, and we haven't seen Rodan yet. A lot of 50s monster movies like to slowly build things up and only show you the monster after the halfway point, but this one actually gives you another monster movie before the main monster movie. And don't worry about Shigeru, it'll take more than a cave-in to kill him. Hell, being in an earthquake is what lets people discover he's still alive. Shigeru claims to not remember anything, but maybe looking at some production stills will jog his memory. Think hard. Remember? You killed it in the mines. Shigeru, they killed your friend Goro! Oh, memories make Shigeru head hurt. Oh well, I guess we'll just need someone else to provide exposition. The monster that came from the mine is actually a species of prehistoric insect that once roamed the Earth. It's a destructive creature. But it's also an opportunity to study the primitive... Wow, even the movie didn't give a shit about what that guy had to say. And it wouldn't be a 50s sci-fi movie without a UFO sighting. Able flight, calling Big Fence Tower. An unidentified object has just crossed my course at supersonic speed. What? Supersonic? Great, now they're including Sega characters in this movie. Can you identify the flying object? I'm not exactly sure. I can't tell what it is, but I think it's trying to write Will You Marry Me in the Sky. The UFO is seen by people all across Asia and is thought to be a gigantic flying monster. My money's on Mothra. One thing's for sure, chemtrail conspiracy theorists are going to have a field day with this one. In addition to the UFO, there's apparently an active volcano that's in danger of erupting, although this doesn't seem to bother people very much. I'll give you two to one odds. If Mount Toya is in any danger of erupting, People will go there. Wait, people will go to the volcano if they know it's about to erupt? That doesn't seem like a very smart idea. That's like going into a dark basement in a slasher movie and loudly announcing you're not a virgin. By the way, you may recognize the voice of Paul Fries, who also did some voice work in King Kong Escapes, but someone else who did the dubbing in this movie was none other than George Takei. I wonder what characters he voiced. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll just never know for sure. Oh my, what a large pecker. And its beak is big too. <laughs> uh. From the position of the camera and the shoe, it looks as though they might have been running. From something that was strong enough to carry both of them away. You can tell all that from a shoe? Shigeru gets his memory back when he looks at some birds hatching, which causes him to remember seeing a gigantic egg, which soon hatched into something terrifying. Not the mama. Okay, it's actually Rodan. And if you're wondering how the giant bugs tie into this, they're actually Rodan's food. Yeah, the things that caused so much trouble and were impervious to bullets are just the main monster's breakfast. Now that Shigeru's got his memory back, it's time to find Rodan. However, his narration came back too. Relentlessly, we pressed on. We felt we were entering a giant grave. How much of it did I dream? How much of it did I imagine? More importantly, who the hell are you talking to? We acted as a group, but individually we were afraid. The bats in the dark underground added to the eerie atmosphere. They say in movies it's always better to show, not tell, but in this movie they tell you as they're showing you. And this narration isn't in the Japanese version, instead they just go into the mine. Were the American distributors worried people wouldn't be able to tell what was happening right in front of them on screen? We looked around us. I know! You don't have to tell me! We found a piece of the monster's egg and decided to test its reflexes for some reason. Then there was a cave-in causing us to flee. I can remember the horrible stench as my bowels evacuated from fright and filled the seat of my mining suit. Now that they have a piece of the egg, maybe they can figure out what they're dealing with. 
It might take a while for their computer to come up with the results, though. It almost exploded after they tried inputting 2 plus 2. How big is a reptile when it's full grown? I'm not sure. May have been full grown when it hatched. Wait, it was fully grown in the egg? Its weight is over 100 tons, and it has a wing spread of perhaps 500 feet. Yikes. Feel sorry for the mama, Rodan. They must have tore her up something good. They find out Rodan is hiding within the volcano, so scramble the stock footage. Good job, boys. You really killed the shit out of that volcano. Oh, right. They were supposed to kill Rodan. That's it! The bird that hunts from the egg! Are you positive? We really need to be sure this is the right giant flying bird monster here. Especially considering what happens next. It has a mate! That's right. Turns out there's also a female Rodan. Or maybe this one's the male? I don't know. I can't really tell the difference. By the way, gotta love the print they use for the DVD of the American version. Looks like they sourced it from the finest VHS copy they found at a garage sale. I'm sorry, can we please swap out some of the footage for the monster scenes? Ah, there, that's better. Shortly after escaping, the Rodans attack the city of Sasebo. Oh, well, what do you know? A kaiju movie where the monster doesn't attack Tokyo. Good thing, too. The construction workers in Tokyo have gotta be exhausted. Anyway, run for your lives, but make sure you close up shop properly first. Oh, and for people expecting me to rip on the effects and say how crappy Rodan looks, for the sake of comparison, here's a scene from an American movie I've done on this show about a giant flying monster. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? By 50 standards, this looks fine. And Toho must have been confident in these effects. They reused them in Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. Although I do have one question. What the hell is this an ad for? It looks like an old racist cartoon of a cow drinking a milkshake. If anyone knows what that is, please tell me, because I'm genuinely curious here. This movie started with a coal mine. Now say hello to wind power, assholes. The worst part of all this, not only is Rodan destroying the city, he's also belching in public. That is so rude. Man, looks like the city is really taking a pounding. Good thing these guys boarded up their shops earlier. Hundreds dead, the city in flames, and nothing will kill them. The Rodans did this. No, it was a grease fire. What do you think did it? Having learned the Rodans are hibernating in the volcano, the army plans to use explosives to collapse the volcano and bury them alive. In my opinion, the plan is too dangerous. Montoya can erupt, but think of the people, the women, the children. Yeah, if only there was some way to evacuate them before we blew up the volcano. Well, I guess they're just gonna have to die. Oh, of course they evacuate. Wait, I can't leave yet. I still need to board up my shop. But hang on, what about the romance between Shigeru and Kiyo? Uh, these two are supposed to be love interests, right? I want to be with you because I love you. I love you. Okay, just checking. So the army blows the volcano, and that's pretty much it. The plan goes off without a hitch. This is one Japanese monster movie where the army actually succeeds in defeating the monster. Okay, there is a bit of a twist. One Rodan escapes, but when the other one gets trapped in the erupting volcano, it decides to commit suicide rather than be without its mate. Wow. I think Rodan ended up having a more touching love story in this movie than Shigeru did. But that doesn't stop him from giving more narration. Each had refused to live without the other. And so, we were dying together. I wondered whether I could ever hope to die as well. Yeah, don't worry, I'm sure that'll happen eventually. And you know what, the more I think about it, the more this ending seems kind of familiar. It was as if something human were dying. As the flames consumed them in a fiery holocaust. Their last agony wails echoing in a mournful cry. For now, Godzilla, that strangely innocent and tragic monster, has gone to Earth. Whether he returns or not, the things he has taught us remain. Oh god, it finally happened. I've seen so many monster movies, they're starting to blur together. Rodan may not be quite the classic that the first Godzilla movie is. There's no subtext and it doesn't have the sense of impending doom that that film has, but it's still a solid monster movie. While a lot of 50s sci-fi movies take their time to get going, this one gets straight to the monster action. 
And the bait and switch of making you think it's a giant bug movie before the real monster shows up is actually kind of clever. It's also got some of the best city destruction scenes in a 50s monster movie, which is probably why Toho ended up using them in other films. Seriously, I hope that guy hanging onto the tree got some residuals. Rodan proved to be very popular and showed up in many of the Godzilla films, and even the giant bugs ended up reappearing in the movie Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Well, kind of, anyway. Weirdly, though, Rodan's never had his own movie after this one. Well, hey, maybe being in that upcoming American Godzilla sequel will give him more exposure. That way they can build up to Rodan vs. Mothra. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Yeah!